Hey, uh, thanks to all y'all for being here. Uh, this is actually my first conference talk. So if I make it to the end and I'm still conscious, that's a win. Uh -huh. uh, I'm really excited about sharing this. Um, before we start, uh, is anybody here familiar with Gatsby? Has anybody heard of Gatsby? Okay, has anybody tried it? Okay, cool. Um, anybody using it in production? Okay. Um, so I just want to get a feel. I want to go over what Gatsby is. We'll spend a lot of time on that. Um, probably not as much time on the Drupal side because the whole idea of Gatsby is that it's, it's agnostic of, of your back end for the most part. Um, so I think a lot of, uh, I think if you have a lot of understanding of something, you're much more likely to try it out and, and not be afraid of, uh, some of the words you might hear around it. Um, so after I hopefully sh show the two working together, you'll feel ready to take it on um, in some more advanced context. All right, uh, who am I? I? A few years ago, I worked here in Asheville um, at a at tech startup. Uh, I did a little bit of everything, um, some JavaScript, PHP, and SQL. Um, I now work for Media Current. Media Current is a full service digital agency. Uh, we're based out of Atlanta. Probably lots of Media Current folks here in the room. Um, let's see. I really like JavaScript, but, uh, and one of my favorites is, is Gatsby. So it's been around for about a year, um, but the last few months I've really started getting into it. All right, so here's kind of the agenda. First, we're going to do what is Gatsby. We're going to look at the main parts, main ideas, why you should use it, how well does it work with Drupal, uh, how to get started, plugging up to Drupal, and then looking at kind of the future of Gatsby. Um, even though I have 30, 45 minutes, it's still not nearly enough time uh, to get into all the ins and outs. Um, but I'll, I'll leave you with kind of a roadmap and some resources of, of where to go next. All right. So what is Gatsby? It's a React-based GraphQL-powered static site generator. But what does that mean? It takes the best parts of React, Webpack, React Router, GraphQL, all these really cool front-end tools, and it, it really packages them together into one um, really nice like developer experience. Um, so don't get her, uh, held up on the term static site generator. A lot of people are like, oh, like Jekyll. And it's like, yes, it does generate a static site, but it's a lot more going on um, than that. It's far more like a, a modern front end framework um, than just a static site generator. Um, it uses powerful pre-configuration to build a website that just has static files. So um, it's just going to be one HTML file um, at the end of the day with your assets. Um, it handles a lot of the ugliness of Webpack. If, has anyone used Webpack here? Okay, do you like messing with your Webpack configuration? Probably not. Um, a lot of that is, uh, is brittle and it can break, but it's really powerful. So Gatsby handles all that for you, image, app, image loading, asset optimization, uh, prefetching your data, and all that comes out of the box. Um, it, the other really cool part about it is it's data agnostic. So it will handle your data from any source. Um, so your favorite CMS, like Drupal, Markdown, um, any API, JSON files, CSVs. Um, it, it really doesn't care where it comes from. You can, you can pull it all in together, and I'll show you how we do that. And yet you end up with one static site that is very portable. So if you're happy with where it's hosted, you can stick up there. It's very easy to move it around um, and host it very cheaply and very easily. All right. So the main parts of Gatsby, because like I said, it's kind of a it's kind of a sandwich of all these things put together. Um, uh, think of Gatsby more as like it's the glue that's holding GraphQL, React, and these other front end tools together. All right. So GraphQL is like the biggie. Uh, a lot of people hear, oh, Gatsby uses GraphQL, and they just peace out. They're like, I, I don't know GraphQL. Looks confusing. I don't want to learn it. Um, and they, they end up not using Gatsby because of that. 
Um, it's a really big part of Gatsby. It's a main, I have it listed as a main part and a main idea. Um, as a main part, well, has anyone here used GraphQL before? Okay. Um, so remember how I said that it can bring data from anywhere? Uh, that's not super special, right? Like you can, you can do that with pretty much anything. You can, you can have a site that hits some APIs and has uh, its own database and whatever. That's not that special. Um, but what Gatsby does is more unique because it has this two-part querying system. So first, it queries all your data sources, however, like you would in a normal app. Like I said, you, you can import images, you can have uh, API calls. Um, you do all that uh, pretty much the same. But the, the cool part is uh, it builds this internal GraphQL schema. So then the second part is you now have this really uniform uh, data source that you can query in the same way. So um, all now all of your images, all of your blog posts that are coming from uh, markdown files, your data that's coming from Drupal, all that is just queried in the same way with GraphQL queries. Um, does that, does that make sense? That's a, it's a really important part. Um, uh, but a lot of people are like, I, do I need to know GraphQL? And yes, you do. Uh, but I've learned GraphQL through Gatsby. It's, it's a really good entry point um, if you're trying to, to learn this and you don't know how to approach GraphQL. Um, but if you're, if you're looking around like, what the heck is this two-layer querying system? Um, like I said, it's a really big part of this, but it's also one of the coolest parts. Um, and I'll, I'll show you later on when we look at GraphQL as, um, as an idea behind it, why it's so cool um, and why it helps your React components um, be able to bring data from anywhere. I can't look away from that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next main part is React. Um, show of hands if you're familiar with React. Okay, cool. So one of the best parts that I like about Gatsby is it's, this is straight from their docs. It's built to behave almost exactly like a normal React application. So however you do your React development now, you can pretty much do it the same way through Gatsby. It, it, you know, if it's render props or um, higher components, uh, whatever your style, Gatsby is cool with it. Uh, it doesn't force you to write React uh, in a certain way. Um, do you need to know it? Yes, you do need to know it, but again, <laughs> It's, it's one of those things where if you're learning React, um, maybe you're using Create React App or something, this would be a very similar uh, learning tool as Create React App. It's a good entry point um, to, to touch in React for the first time, um, which for me is great. I, I love to just be able to write React components with Gatsby um, and it not be some, some special uh, you know, thing that I have to do to make them work. All right, third part is going to be web, what I call Webpack and Friends. Um, React Router is, is the big one. But if you've ever, um, when you hear Webpack config, if you get a cold sweat and the, the hair stands up on your neck, um, for a long time, React development meant all this tooling, right? Um, when I first started React before Create React app, you could spend all day building this like cool boilerplate and then just like find the exact same thing on GitHub that you could use and then that breaks. Like It was a lot of tooling and a lot of extra stuff around there. Um, Gatsby is similar to Create React App in that sense is that it, it controls a lot of that for you and hides it, hides it away from you. Um, so I, I have, if you've used Create React App and you ever had to eject maybe to get to the higher level configuration, I have not had to do anything like that really in Gatsby as far as Webpack. Or, or routing is concerned. Um, everything on those two fronts has been good. So the main ideas of Gatsby, and these, this comes straight from their docs and tutorials, and I honestly didn't dig into this until the last like two months, but I'm really glad that I did because it makes the whole uh, ecosystem make a lot more sense now. Um, so we've got components, this thing called PRPL, hooks, plugins, and GraphQL. Is, is showing up again. So let's start with components. Lots of frameworks use components, right? They're not super unique or special. You can find them all over web development. Gatsby's not trying to reinvent the wheel, so they were like, all right, who does component-based development really well? Um, so the idea is components, but the medium is React. So they just said, let's use React because it does component-based building really well. Um, Let's see. And here's another quote from the Gatsby docs uh, explaining kind of their choice behind 
uh, React's component architecture. Um, so they they fully embraced uh, React. This is not something where you can use Gatsby with Vue or um, you know any other any other front end library. It's it's all in on React. All right. This is one that I had never heard of until I started reading about. Has anyone heard of PRPL before? Okay, got one head nod, <laughs> all right. Uh, so even after using Gatsby for a while, I hadn't heard of it, but I started to get the feeling of like, what's the method behind this madness? Because Gatsby's kind of claim to fame is it's really fast. Um, I didn't, lots of libraries say they're fast, lots of sites say they're fast, so I wasn't like clicking to try it for a long time because I said they were fast, but then I did, and I was like, wow, this is fast, okay? Like, when you get around on some of these Gatsby build sites um, and you really look at what's on the page and what it's doing, it's, it's really, really um, fast. So I was like, why? How are they doing this? There's gotta be some strategy going on. And uh, they, again, they didn't use a homemade solution, like they use React components. So for this architecture, they use something called PRPL. Um, and it's an architecture developed by Google for building websites and apps that work exceptionally well on smartphones and other devices with unreliable network connections. Basically, what Gatsby's, their, their tagline is they want to build sites for the next billion web users. So um, folks that are only using the internet on their phone and they need the page to load really fast or they're probably not going to look at it at all. And so Google has this methodology for building these sites with service workers and other things. So. Uh, this is kind of like one of those things where the teacher's like, here's what it stands for, you don't have to know, you don't have to memorize this, but it's for pushing critical resources, using preloading, it renders the initial route, pre-cache, and lazy loading. So all those, once you dig into that and you start to look at Gatsby, every decision that they've made uh, with the links and the images and how they do things, is it all at least has a good source of truth. So it's not like it's just flying by night saying, well, this is fast, let's do this. It's all got to fit into this PRPL um, architecture. All right, next main part, uh, lifecycle hooks. Lots of, uh, lots of folks use lifecycle hooks. Um, you use them with Drupal, you use them with React components, you use them all over programming. So um, Gatsby has its own set of lifecycle hooks. Um, it's what I call the deepest rabbit hole, um, because if you're having to really get in there, um, you might spend some time. That means you're probably doing something uh, pretty custom, or you're building a plugin, which is really the point of this Lifecycle Hooks API, is they want to encourage a very robust uh, plugin ecosystem, which we're going to do plugins next. But, um, so they built this API, and um, they also want to encourage a theme ecosystem where you can have uh, a Gatsby site that's already styled and ready to go as well. If you want to get into building plugins and transformers, you really have to know this API. Most of the time, day-to-day -day development, you don't. Um, it's, it's very rare that you're having to dig in there. Most of the time, your interaction with this API is going to be one line of configuration where you just install the plugin that you want to use, and, and that's it. Um, but there is a Drupal plugin that I'm going to touch on later that if you want to get involved with it, then you'll need to look at this API and how it works and see how you can help and uh, build on the Drupal module. All right, plugins. That big API system is the powerful rabbit hole, right? And the out of that come these sleek, shiny plugins. That's the idea. So you have this really powerful API, but for day-to-day -day developers, they want, to be, want there to be this nice, clean plugin system where if you want data from Drupal, it's one line of config to, to hook it up to your Drupal site. If you want data from Twitter, one line of config to bring it in from Twitter. Um, right, we want it to just be like this, right? <laughs> Boom, you plug it in and you know Kung Fu. <laughs> um, let's see, so these hide all the heavy lifting so, um, so that you can bring in all your data from different data sources. Um, at the end of the day, they're all node packages. So uh, when you want to install them, you use NPM to install these plugins. Uh, one example is, let's see, uh, transformer remark. So that's so say you wanted to just set up your CSS or you wanted to process your images or in this case, use Markdown 
you wanted to write your blog post in Markdown. You can use, uh, you just npm install and it links into your Gatsby project and into that, that API and you add this one line of config uh, and then you can write your blog posts in Markdown and they're brought in and turned into, um, into GraphQL, queryable data. All right, now we're back to GraphQL. All right, so it was a main part of Gatsby, but it's also a main idea of Gatsby. So like React, it was developed internally at Facebook back in 2015. It, it didn't ramp up and become quite as popular as React did, but it's, it's starting to now. Um, um, it's starting, starting to be seen as a popular alternative to REST and JSON APIs. Um, the most important idea with it is that you only get the data that you need or that you want, okay? Um, and I'll show you a nice example of that in a second. In terms of Gatsby, all of your traditional AJAX calls that are normally done in your React components are now done in your Gatsby node file or with the plugin and then queried with GraphQL in the component. So if you're used to a, a React component or just a JavaScript file where you're doing you know, dollar sign dot AJAX, you don't do that in your JavaScript anymore. You're gonna do GraphQL queries in your React components that are, that are now querying the, this common data source that you've built by these plugins. So if you have a Markdown plugin, a Drupal plugin, um, a Twitter plugin, all that gets put into this one GraphQL schema. And so then in your React components, you're writing a query that's like, you know, my blog posts or my Twitter things. And it doesn't care that it originally came from an API or that it originally came from Drupal. It just knows, hey, now it's in this nice central GraphQL server. And GraphQL is a big part of why Gatsby so fast. Um, going back to that PRPL pattern, this fit in with that pattern of how you can just get the data that you need um, to render that component. So previously we did that, uh, we NPM installed that uh, Markdown plugin, right? So here's how we would actually use that, okay? So I might step out here for a second. Um, so, we use that plugin, right? And now that plugin has taken the markdown files that are our blog posts and it's made them part of this GraphQL schema. It doesn't care that they're markdown anymore, it's just made them part of GraphQL. So we, we've titled them all markdown remark, right? So then we can grab what we want from it, the, the, the body, the title, tag, state, whatever. And this is all in one .js or .jsx file. This is your React component, okay? So then with some Gatsby magic, uh, any data that's in this query, I mean, you can see so right below here, we had all Twitter posts. You know, they could be right there, but it all gets passed into this data variable up at the top here. And then you've got your, your render of your React component and you can grab the data that you need. And now that component is just totally portable. It's got its, you could have your CSS and JS if you want in here too. And so then you've got your styling, your data, and your markup all in one component um, and it's totally portable and readable if anybody looks at this component they could tell exactly where its data is supposed to be coming from and what it's supposed to what it's supposed to do all right so the query typically goes at the bottom that's a stylistic thing um, it makes its results available as this data prop and then you can grab the data oh, it's gone you can grab the parts of the data that, <laughs> that you want from there so now the next part is just a really good visual visualization that I found that helped me see why GraphQL is kind of cool so it's the hamburger example so traditional JSON API you get the whole burger back right and then you, you pick and choose what you need from that and you might render, you might display some of that, you might not. You might parse it together with another API call that you made because there's two endpoints and you don't, you don't control the endpoints, you gotta build your own object. Um, GraphQL just lets you pick and choose what exactly you want uh, from that endpoint. Well, I've seen this with pizza and salad too, that's your thing, so. Uh, all right, so we did the main parts, GraphQL, React, and their friends, main ideas, components, PRPL, lifecycle hooks in the API, plugin system, and GraphQL. Again. All right, 
Any questions so far? I want to make sure we have time for questions at the end, but I know this is, I know we have some people in here that didn't touch on, didn't know what Gatsby was at all coming in, so I know it's a lot of information, but. Just for point of clarity, when you say JSON API, are you talking about um, regular old JSON type endpoints that give mm -hmm. you stuff back, or are you talking about actual the JSON that you guys back? Both. Both. So if you're hitting a regular, um, a non-Drupal endpoint that's returning JSON, um, or if for Drupal, for this, for Gatsby to work with Drupal, you do need the JSON API module um, installed. Uh, you could always write a custom plugin to hit any kind of endpoint that you want. So um, I was talking to someone earlier, if you installed the GraphQL module on a Drupal site, you could write a plugin that that handled that. You would just have to do that on your own. If you want to rely on the plugin ecosystem, you do have to play by some of their rules. So right now the Gatsby Drupal plugin does require the JSON API module. But Gatsby in general, that API lets you hit any kind of API, um, bring in any kind of file type from the file system and make it queryable in GraphQL. Yeah, I only ask because there's a lot of things that you can't do with JSON API mm -hmm. in, in Drupal, and okay. so you have to fall back on things like custom endpoints or views mm -hmm. with REST plugin. So there's ways to work around that. Yeah, you, I mean, the the Gatsby uh, lifecycle API, it's it's just JavaScript. So whatever you can do to parse that data and massage that data to be what you need, um, that's what the plugins are doing anyways. They're just hiding it from you into one nice config line. But someone somewhere wrote all that JavaScript, and you can go to that and help maintain it um, and see it. All right, so why use Gatsby, right? Like. That looks like a lot of <laughs> information. Um, we touched a little bit on the on the benefits, but I think a lot of time when I think about it, I think of the uh, the parts and ideas kind of being the why. Um, but you can kind of tell this is uh, it's not a super simple static site generator, right? Like that's not what I just described. I I don't think a lot of static site generators are they expect one file type for it to work. Like, all right, yeah, I'll do, I'll do Markdown or I'll do YAML and I'll generate a static site for you. Um, this is a lot, a lot more than that. We've got way more power uh, features and structure to give it a much different feel. Um, it's got really, really good community and support. Uh, like I said, it hasn't been around that long, but it's had a lot of adoption um, really quickly. So. And they focus a lot on the documentation. So I'll have some of those links at the end, but um, really good support. Um, uh, touching back one above is uh, if you're an agency or a freelancer, it's so powerful and it's, um, it, it's got so many features that you could build a sales process around this. You could build a workflow around Gatsby and it, it uh, be very, fairly straightforward. Um, versus it just being kind of like one little piece. It's a pretty big piece. You could be like, this this client, they need a Gatsby site for their solution, you know? Um, um, it's fast. That's you're gonna hear that over and over. It's it's demonstrably fast though. You can you can measure it and see how much faster it makes pages to follow that PRPL architecture the way they do. Um, like I said, it can fill in a lot of scenarios where maybe a full end-to-end um, -end Drupal build doesn't make as much sense because uh, you can spit these out very, very quickly. Um, it's made to be decoupled. I hope I made it clear. It doesn't care where your data comes from, right? So if you want to get data from Drupal and somewhere else for this, um, it doesn't care. Uh, and lastly, I don't want to dwell on this too much. Um, but I'll link to some case studies of the cost savings with Gatsby. Because you're just hosting a static file, it's, it's super cheap. Um, there's one case study up, I'll post where they went from 5,000 to $5 a month and they're hosting, and that was actually a Drupal agency that, that was doing that, um, interestingly enough. Personally, I switched my, all my personal sites over from AWS and saved like 10 bucks a month. So, <laughs> you know, it makes it really, really easy to host. Um, so now let's, we've, hopefully you've got some ideas bouncing around in your head of like what, what Gatsby is, right? And now it's like, all right, well, let's, let's hook it up to Drupal and see what that actually looks like. Um, but how well does it work? Um, just as well as any Gatsby 
plugin. There's, I think, over a hundred Gatsby plugins now. So, it's like any open source. Um, however, uh, strong the community or the developers are behind that source plugin, that's how that's how well it works. You know, um, I know there's some active work going on um, with. I think one hiccup was the entity references, um, and there's an open pull request to to add support for that, which is which is really cool. Um, let's see. Actually, the guy that created Gatsby originally um, Kyle, was Kyle Matthews, who is a uh, who was a Drupal developer. So uh, started out from the from a Drupal developer, and uh, there's still some of the core maintainers are are Drupal developers. So the Drupal plugin, there is a little bit more happening under the hood with uh, with the Drupal plugin, maybe than some of the others. Um, if you think about, you know, all the the nested nature of what Drupal sends back, um, it's a lot of looping and getting that data out. But uh, at the end of the day, it's one file, so it's one JavaScript file um, that you can wrap your head around pretty quickly. But there are some plugins that are a little bit more straightforward. All right, so getting started. This is a little repo I made to help folks get started. When I started messing around with it, um, I didn't know anything about Drupal. I've, I've only been familiar with Drupal for the last couple of months. Um, but piecing the two together really should be the easy part. The harder part is learning Gatsby and learning your whatever your backend data source is. Uh, linking the two together should not be the issue. Um, let's see. Uh, so one thing I kind of figured out was with Drupal, there's a lot of ways to get a site going, right? Like, you could do lots of different uh, distros of Drupal. You, you have to pick one. So um, I ended up using um, a Contenta setup that is already on Pantheon. And they, they built it to show a demo of Gatsby and Drupal, but they didn't have their own repo. So I couldn't, uh, I couldn't clone it and start messing with it. So I kind of had to make this make my own but it hits their um, their API, their endpoint. So I made a repo with the basic walkthrough, I changed some of the config to, uh, to make it work with their endpoint, um, and then I, I copied it just to make sure that I did my own thing on Pantheon and made sure that it worked um, with mine as well. So what's unique about this, this repo that I'm pointing you to? Not much. Um, I think I changed one line in the configuration and I uh, backed out a lot of their styling. They're using the out-of-the-box um, initiative with the Umami styling, so I, I backed a lot of that out and just did the Gatsby default styling. So when you start a when you start a new project with Gatsby, it gives you this really simple styling. I went with that, but it's hooked up to a, a Drupal endpoint. Um, and it's really easy to change it to a custom endpoint. Uh, if you have a, a Drupal site that you want to plug it into, change one line and it should switch over. All right, so let's actually hook these two up because I was nervous about how much time I had to spend to really get through the, the guts of Gatsby um, versus talking and talking with Drupal um, the time when Gatsby's connected. But um, if you've already done those steps, you should have, does anyone have the, the site open? I'm gonna switch this over here. So we're gonna do, we're gonna install Gatsby globally. It, it has a command line tool. That's, that's really all that it is. And what that command line tool does is it clones a repo, it installs the node modules, and gives you a couple, um, it installs all the files, all the JavaScript that's really controlling Gatsby. Um, wanna make sure that you have not Gatsby version two. It's in beta and there are some big changes, so um, I didn't wanna to touch on much of that yet, but just make sure you have under version two. Gatsby comes with this new command, so Gatsby new, you title your site, and then you point it to a GitHub repo, which is which is kind of cool. So you can point it to any GitHub repo um, that anybody makes as a Gatsby starter. There's some officially, you know, sanctioned one on the site, but say you um, say you want to do a, a blog with Markdown and it, you want it to use 
um, style components for your styling, somebody might have already made that boilerplate. So you can point to their repo and it installs a site with um, a certain template already installed or a certain configuration already in place. If you don't supply a repo, it just does the Gatsby default starter. All right, and then we're gonna start the site. Then you go into your directory and you run this other Gatsby command, Gatsby develop. Okay, and that's gonna, that's gonna compile all the files, start your local host server, and also start the GraphQL server as well. And then you'll go to your local host. And this is what you should see if you're using the Gatsby Drupal starter that I, that I linked to. So it's not a whole lot to look at, right? It's nothing fancy. Um, but the integration is working. So let me go, I'll go to the live site um, just to show I'm not just showing you screenshots. All right, so. All right, so this is, this is it. Um, if you were to look under the hood, which we will in a second, all this data is coming from Drupal, and this is using the out-of-the-box initiative um, umami data, if y'all know what I'm, uh, what I'm talking about. Um, so these are just all the recipe titles that it's, that it's printing out. All right, so now let's look at the code. So this is what the Gatsby config looks like. So one of the files that it, it spits out this file structure, right? And one of them is called Gatsby config. And that's probably the only place you'll have to touch uh, when you're just getting started. But so this is the Gatsby source Drupal, right? These are our plugins. We would list all of the plugins that we're using either for different sources or to help us handle different types of files. And there's only two options here. One is your base URL and then one is um, you know, for the extra part of that route. Like you might say slash JSON API or something else if you want to customize it. But right now, this is the one that I'm hitting for this demo. This is the Contenta demo one that they set up for people to use. But that's where you would swap out your Drupal site that has your endpoint and your data. And you would just run develop, you would stop the develop, run it again, and it would pull in your data. All right, really cool thing um, is the GraphQL part, right? Like, if you're, especially if you're just learning it, it's like where, how do I visualize what where all my what all my data looks like? Okay, so it comes with this really cool tool called Graphical that is um, it's like a sandbox, like playground type thing for GraphQL data. So if you, when you run develop, it'll spit out these two URLs at the end, your local host for the site, and then your local host uh, for the graphical tool. And it'll, looks, it'll look like, like this. And I'm gonna open up the live one real quick. All right, so what this does is it lets you test this data and, and see what it looks like. Can I just ask a quick question? Sure, go ahead. I may have missed the part where the, the local GraphQL database gets populated. So in that develop, that, that command, Gatsby develop, um, I didn't show you, but it runs through the terminal. You'll see it um, building all this stuff. And one thing that it's doing is it's going through that list of plugins and fetching that data. So it only fetches the data at build time. So if if you add content to your, to your Drupal site and you haven't run um, Gatsby build or develop, then it won't know about that data yet. And there's all kinds of cool strategies for, for when to rebuild your site and you can set up hooks to, to hit your, um, wherever you're hosting the site and tell it to run build again. Um, I don't have time to get into all the different ways you can do that, but that's typically you'll come up with some kind of strategy that makes sense. Like when you push new data to Drupal, it pings your Gatsby server and it, and it just runs, it runs build again and it's, and it's there. Um, so this is like a little um, playground that you can mess with um, and practice writing your queries and see what's available. So the, uh, the Drupal data we're dealing with is called all recipes, but if you're not sure what is even there, you do control space and it does autocomplete for you. So this is all the, the data that's in our GraphQL 
schema, and we can you can pick one. So we've got we've got all recipes. Let's do that. And um, edges and node are some GraphQL E's that basically mean edges means it's a group, node means it's a single one. So if you do edges, it's going to return an array. So you can see here the edges, and then the node is for each item in that array, and then you give it the property that you want that you want to give on it. So in this case, I, I do title ingredients. I hit play up here, and it shows me what data will actually come back. So I can, I'm like, okay, that's cool, um, but I want to mess with that component a little bit, but I'm not sure what data is available in these recipes. You just control space, and it's like all the uh, all the available data. So can't really read those, but I uh, have yeah, the difficulty of each recipe, I guess. And then you can play, and it adds a difficulty to to that. So this is invaluable if you're learning GraphQL. Um, it's a really cool tool for for visualizing your data. And uh, just, just to clarify, is like for example, all recipes, like those root um, mm -hmm. GraphQL queries, are those those are all defined in the source plugins? Is that right? Yeah, so you'll want to look at whatever plugin you're using, um, but it'll generally camel case, um, use camel case um, for different things. But you can define it yourself in the in the plugin API. Um, but some plugins you'll just have to go by what they return. Like if you use a Twitter one, it returns it as all tweets, and you just you know. So like the uh, like the, the Drupal plugin, for example, like was that uh, was that um, is it just like all nodes or something? No, I the other one I did, I made some articles, and it was all articles. So I think it's by I content think, type. Maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, now let's look at the actual component, the React component. Um, again, down at the bottom we have the query. This is with our actual data now, not with the uh, not with that markdown data we were using before the data. This is the actual recipe query that we've been using, the one I just kind of had in that graphical tool. Uh, you can see it gets put in as the data prop, and then we're just rendering, I'm looping through and rendering the title of each recipe. So this is like, the only starter code that I put in there. I wanted it to be pretty simple um, to where the point is you've got it, you've got them hooked up and then you can start building whatever React stuff you want with that umami data um, for whatever your use case is. All right, so we haven't really talked about React Router, but one really cool thing, so we've got this, uh, these recipes, right? Like, it's cool that we can have, um, by default, it lets you, it, this pages directory is special. So it's got, gives you the directory of source pages. These are special. It's gonna look there automatically and create a page uh, and a route with any file that's in there. So if you notice, well, I have that index.js file, that becomes your home page. But we've got that page two JS. So if we go back and you see the link to page two, um, that's just because we have a component named page two in the pages folder. It automatically is going to create a page from that component, and you'll be able to link over there. So. So down here, now there's a. this is the second page, it's just another React component, and Gatsby does some really cool data prefetching. So because that link is on the page, it's, it starts lazy loading that content while the user's on page one. So then when they click page two, the page is already loaded, they click and it just displays. Can you um, pass arguments into it? So like you can pass the recipe you want to display? So it's like, okay, cool, we can make one page, right? Like, But what if you have slash blog and you just wanted the slug to be the title of the blog page, right? Um, there's a really cool way that it does that. Unfortunately, that's about to change a little bit in version two, so I, I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time um, talking about how, it, how it's going to do that, but there is uh, a blog post that I'm gonna link you to that would show you how do you create like slash blog slash my blog title just automatically. It'll create those pages dynamically.
and yeah, and it'll update. You, know, you can see that the route matches the name of the page. All right, we got something on the page. Like it's a it's a little anticlimactic to just have like the titles of all the recipes on the page, right? This is normally when I would, if I'm messing with a library, like I'll take a break or pat myself on the back, like oh cool, I got it, I got it working, right? Um, <laughs> so this is really just to really familiarize you with Gatsby, um, get it hooked up to Drupal. And the point of this starter is that you now have a lot of data. That out of the box um, initiative comes with lots of um, complex data that you can build really anything that you want um, want with it. Uh, this is the out of the box page. All right, this is the actual one built with Gatsby. So if you've ever seen these pages before, um, this is the one built with Gatsby. So it does have Let's see. Yeah, recipe slash one. So it does have the advanced you know, page generation going on here. Um, so I've got a link to that as well. But that's that's if you were to follow this like all the way through, you you could end up with with a page just like this. All right. So that's that's really like just the tip of the iceberg. There's so many Gatsby features that I don't even have time to talk about the way it handles images. The special links I was talking about that preload the next page. Uh, there's so many features like that that are that are built in that that tie into the things that we've talked about for the uh, the PRPL and keeping it fast and performant. Uh, but I did want to jump real quick to the version two that I talked about. Right, it's it's in beta right now, so you can use it if you want to, um, and it is much faster already. So it jumps from using Webpack 1 under the hood to Webpack 4, from React Router to Reach Router, which is a, uh, an accessibility issue with React apps and, and the router not being super accessible by default. Um, so that'll be nice. And then the GraphQL queries, it gives you more flexibility of letting you do the GraphQL queries pretty much anywhere you want in your app. Um, and it also uses React 16.3, so any of the new React stuff like context and fragments, you'll be able to use that in in Gatsby by default. Um, so as far as limitations that this is gonna help with, one of the main ones is once you hit about an app that's about 10,000 pages, you would start to see really slow build times um, to where you maybe worry about like, I think like up to an hour for like 10,000 pages. That was that's with V1. But just yesterday they did a 100,000 page site in 93 seconds. So. <laughs> These steps make a big difference. Um, that's, I think, not with images. With images, I think they were, that was about 10 or 15,000 pages in a minute and a half. So that's kind of become a non-issue. For a while, that was a big issue. It was like, well, if you have all of these products or all of these blog posts, then you start to see some slow build times. But we don't really, aren't going to have to worry about that anymore. Otherwise, I did want to show you, that's, that's kind of the, the end of the road of, of where I really want to deep dive into. Uh, but I wanted to just show some of these sites that you can build. Um, and it, it's cool because the one that's in that case study I talked about where they had the massive cost savings, I cannot remember, I cannot remember the name of the parent company, but they have all of these sports um, products, right? They have like 40 brands of sports products that they make. And they started out with this site, transferring it um, to a Gatsby front end. And it's like full e-commerce, you can log in, um, authorize, like anything you can do with a regular decoupled site, like Gatsby doesn't preclude you from doing anything like that. So you can do authorization. If you wanna add JavaScript, that's like, you know, in, say you want to add, you know, have some JavaScript in your React component that adds to cart, that's fine. Like just cause it's a static page, um, doesn't mean you can't have that inside your React component of, um, you know some additional AJAX calls that are going out if the user does something that it doesn't it doesn't erase those. You can still make AJAX calls um, outside of build time and it works just like normal. So this is a this is a really robust e-commerce site that uh, that used to be Drupal and they're now in the process of moving all of their sites over to these and uh, and their homepage as well. Um, so between this and this is a more like you know blog type, but. Uh, Really, really cool seeing what some of the uh, what some folks are doing doing with this and not letting like you know logging in having users and authorization and uh, a shopping cart and all that 
and getting it working. So, do you know how they're dealing with SEO? So that's an interesting question. Um, it does. There are. There's a cool plugin called React Helmet that works with Gatsby that uh, uh, developed by the NFL of all places, <laughs> and uh, it has a really cool way of uh, generating the metadata in the head of the page. So if you have a blog post, it will update that metadata based on the title, and it, so it'll be dynamic. Um, the, the title and the description and all that will be updated. Um, it shouldn't. Yeah, some of the secondary search engines don't do JavaScript yet, but. Yeah, yeah, some of, the, some of the, most of the big ones are doing it pretty well now, but this is just HTML. So it's not like it's having a regular React app. You're right, you've got like the root div and there's nothing else on the page, but this is fully rendered. Um, so it's even better than a regular yeah, React so, app yeah, for great, SEO. When clients find a great SEO testing tool and run it against your site, mm -hmm. yeah. it works. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, this, by the way, like I got all 99s on Google uh, PageSpeed for like some you know, decent sized little blog sites. Um, so there's all these <laughs> I, when I first saw that site, I thought it was a joke. <laughs> Not that I didn't know there was such thing as boat fishing, but I thought someone was like, oh, I'm going to make a fake e-commerce site with Gatsby to show what I can do. That's a, that's a real honest-to-goodness um, site that... Uh, that Sounds just, expensive. You lose a lot of arrows. <laughs> uh, so these are some resources. Uh, I don't know the best way to get my slides out to everyone, but uh, these are some, some resources. First being the Gatsby Docs. And there's that case study I've been talking about. There's a intro to Gatsby V2, you know, kind of the changes that are that are happening. Um, a guy named Robert Ngo wrote a really good um, article that kind of would pick up where I'm leaving off as far as uh, adding content in your Drupal site and seeing how it changes your GraphQL data. Uh, that'd be a really good article to go to next. Then there's the actual Gatsby plugin uh, if you want to look at maintaining or contributing to that. And then the out of the box site, and last would be Gatsby images because they have a really cool way of handling images that, that helps make it super super fast. That I don't really have time to, to detail, but um, but that's really it. Um, there's my Twitter and GitHub and email and stuff. If y'all have any questions, I'm happy to talk shop whenever. Uh, but if you have any questions now, I think we still have like ten minutes till the next talk. So. What are some of the difficulties in attempting to integrate like more app type functionality in a Gatsby site? You mean as far as like a... So Gatsby assumes that you're generating sites with pages, right, essentially. Mm -hmm. It does all the routing transparently in the background. But let's say part of your site is, I don't know, like a full shopping cart application or something, right? So that's not going to have routes specific to all the actions you have on that page. It's going to be more like a spa type mm -hmm. interface. What are the difficulties in integrating that? Well, that's just at that point you're just writing your regular React components. So, it, if you have um, uh, you know any kind of JavaScript you're going to be writing of like it, whatever methods you want to put on that component to handle the user interaction, it shouldn't it shouldn't slow you down. Um, Besides, more than any other spa would because because it's not routing it, you know they could lose their place. Um, but any React app that's not like Handling the routing, their interactions, and translating into routing like that would have like a similar problem, I think. But um, so it's really easy to just mix and match regular React components with the page components. Nice. Yeah. So yeah, the page component is is special. Um, you can have everything on that page component if you want. Like you can just have really big pages and everything. But generally, you're going to have then a components folder that's going to have the smaller pieces, and the page is going to, you know, import the components that you want and render them. You know, conditionally or, or what have you. Uh, for handling the Drupal data, um, I'm just wondering like, how shallow is the data that I get to, or like, does, for example, like with like ref reference entities, like, um, how's that working with uh, GraphQL? Or so, does that work pretty well? For Zach, you might want to ask Zach that. Yeah. Zach, <laughs> Zach actually. I'll shout out Zach. He did. He was running into problems with the um, the entities, and so he did a pull request. And then, like the next day, one of the guys that does a lot of the work for uh, Gatsby Core is a Drupal developer. I don't know his name, but 
uh, he happened to go PR to handle the same thing at the same time. But yeah, like I had the code all like written up. I'm like, okay, this fixes the problem. And then I went to make a pull request inside this pull request. And this code was a lot better. And I was like, oh, dang, I should have checked it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, as far as like the entities, the nested entities problem, there's an open pull request for that. But it hasn't emerged in yet. And that clears up a lot of it. On that Drupal source plugin? Right, in that Drupal source plugin. Um, and then once it makes all those references and it imports all that data, like GraphQL is aware of the relationships. So then it makes the links on its own between the different types of content you have, right? So you've got a media entity or something like that within a normal node. Um, but yeah, you can get it all together in one GraphQL query instead of like having to hit multiple endpoints because you need to get a taxonomy name mm -hmm. and all you have is the ID. But like um, in terms of like the nested entities, I don't know, like do you have to like import like if you have like articles and pages like like a bunch of articles, like if a bunch of pages listening to art, like linking to articles. Do you have to like load all your articles as well as your pages if you want, or can you just load the pages and then this plugin is smart enough to grab just the articles that your pages actually like to? You know what I mean? Or the, like this plugin grabs everything. I think it just um, grabs everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just grabs like everything. And yeah, like, there's a. I mean, you could like whitelist ones if you want. I've seen where people have done that, like whitelist specific endpoints. But it's kind of hit like the base JSON API yeah. endpoint that lists all the endpoints and references to all of like their entities and so on. So it's like looping through all of that sucker. Like, yeah. Important all in. So if we go back to this, like. So it's in a graph server yeah. that it builds. It's like in graph server. That graph server. Yeah. So that's yeah. Like the initial fetch from Google. It gets everything. And that's all in the Yeah, so you have access to all of that. So it may never actually make it into your compiled site, right? Yeah, it's just okay. kind of there at that time. So you can see, like, here, it, it he's right. It, you don't hit, like, just an article's endpoint. When you do the Drupal plugin, it brings back everything. And then you can, then you can. Is there any way to limit what it, like, what if you don't want everything, you, right? Is that yeah, so Graph, that? GraphQL, you can go, like, uh, full on, like, they have, really cool, if you've ever used Mongo, it kind of reminded me of Mongo, like the way it does like filtering and um, and aggregating and limiting, like yeah. it has these built-in things that you can do with it. But like for, for this plugin at least that's out there, just that specific plugin just grabs it, it brings whole, back It brings back all of it, but it does it at build time, so it doesn't yeah, slow yeah. your page down. Sure. It, then you definitely you're, point it at just the event nodes content type. Well, like instead of yeah. the top level, the well, yeah, I, yeah, I guess that was my question. It was like, if it just hit, hits the events nodes, like anything that events link to, will those be broken then? No. If you, unless no, it's smart enough. Because to, those are referenced entities within that.